What are cash buyers looking for? What do they love when a wholesaler brings them a deal? What makes them think, man, this is a good deal and this is a good wholesaler. All right, let's get into that. That's going to be today's discussion that I'm going to talk to you about from the perspective of a cash buyer. If you would subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications button, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. I appreciate everybody that's been checking out the videos and subscribe to the channel. So my role normally is that of a cash buyer. I work with wholesalers to buy quite a bit of my properties. Uh, I do some advertising and, and direct with the sellers as well. But one of the strategies that I use is buying from wholesalers. So some wholesalers are great. Some wholesalers are somewhere else on the spectrum. And that's with anything, right? And in dealing with multiple different wholesalers, I've dealt with, you know, local wholesalers, virtual wholesalers, close by wholesalers and far away wholesalers and different ones. And so some of the opinions and things that I'm going to talk about in this video are just from my personal experience in dealing with different wholesalers and buying deals that way. Um, and I'll tell you what, you know, stuck out, what a really good deal talking to other, um, cash buyers and other real estate investors. Um, that buy from wholesalers as well. What do you love about a, a deal from a wholesaler? Uh, I know it's a, it's a great way to get into real estate without a lot of money down. Uh, to start out as a real estate investor, wholesaling, you know, you need a contract and a phone and you can take on the whole world. So I have a lot of respect for wholesalers and love dealing with them uh, to buy properties as well. And the first thing that I'm going to talk about that's great when a wholesaler calls me is that it's in my area, right? It's in that, you know, I have a particular area, county, couple counties that I deal with um, that I really like to buy. I know the area well. I feel like that's my, my spot, right? Like, and most real estate investors have an area that they really like to do deals in. Not to say that they won't go outside that area, but if it's in that area that they love to deal with, man, they are happy that you brought them that deal and the property type as well, even better, right? So if, if you brought me a vacant land deal in my area, I'd be interested. If you brought me a mobile home or a condo in my area, I'm still going to look at it, but a vacant land deal in my area, I love it. You know, if you brought me another deal in that area, perfect. But if you bring me, you know, I'm in South Texas, but if you bring me a, a farmland deal in Nebraska, I'm interested, right? But if it's right down the street, right in my area, I'm very interested and I'm appreciative for a wholesaler that says, hey, I know you do deals in this area. I know you work in this area. I thought you might be interested in this deal. And here it is. That's number one, right? And then the second one, um, this one's frustrating when it doesn't go right or that it's presented to you. But when it's, you know, is that the numbers need to be real, right? I get wholesalers that call me and they lay out this, you know, you're going to buy the, the, the house for 200,000. Your remodel cost is going to be 20,000. You're going to turn around and sell it for 500,000. Now that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but you get what I'm saying. Like the, the numbers just aren't real. And it's like, well, if you could do that remodel for 20,000, um, please come down. I'll give you another 10,000 on top of it to run the remodel and to manage it and all that. And if it's only gonna take you 30 days, that's great. Cause it would take me, you know, 60 days or six months or whatever it is, right? The, the numbers need to be real. And if they're not, it's kind of like, you're trying to pull the, you know, the pull the wool over my eyes, right? It's like, man, come on, don't bring me that deal or don't bring me those numbers. You can bring me that deal, but don't tell me my numbers that are wrong. And act like, you know, you're going to make a, I was like, come on, you know? And so a lot of times I see that with over eager wholesalers or maybe they're newer and they don't understand the numbers or they, you know, they have just binge watch HGTV. And so they do know the numbers and then they're presenting them to me with all the confidence in the world. But when the numbers aren't real and they're presented to me, it, it's an immediate turnoff. And so that's when the numbers are real or you just leave it up to me say, this is the deal I've got. You want to do your analysis and get back to me? Or do you want me to go over what I think the numbers would be? Now I'm, I'm fine with it. If you pose it as an opinion, like, look, in my opinion, 
it would cost such and such to remodel this house or to clear this land or to do whatever. I know, you know, you can do your own analysis, but that's what I've come up with, you know, and so I can respect that no problem at all. And so we can go from there. Um, and then the other one that a deal is beautiful when there's some meat left on the bone, right? So it's like, what is that? It's like, you passed me that chicken bone and you've already sucked all the meat off of that thing. And you just hand me the, the bone and said, here's a chicken leg. Not really, not really, man. This is a chicken leg bone and there's no meat on it. So when a wholesaler comes to me and they've taken all the value out of the property with their, with the purchase price and their fees, and maybe their purchase price that they negotiated was too high and with their fee on top of it, there's no room left over, right? So the seller got theirs, the wholesaler wants to get theirs, and then me at the end, the cash buyer, there's nothing left for me. And so the deal that does have something left for me at the end is a great deal, right? That's the deal that you love. But if you get one where it's already been picked off of and you just get the bone at the end, that's not a great deal. So as a wholesaler, if you're bringing a deal to a cash buyer, make sure there's some meat left on the bone. And sometimes I see it presented like, you know, the seller wants too much for the property. The wholesaler wants to make five, 10, who knows, whatever their fee is. Let's say it's, you know, 10,000. Let's say the deal's $50,000 deal and the wholesaler wants to make 10,000 and the buyer wants to make 40,000 and the property's worth 45,000 or 50,000. There's nothing left on the, at the end for me, right? I don't know why you're bringing me that deal. Well, then that's when they come back in with the numbers that aren't real and say, well, you could sell this for a hundred thousand or 75,000. Like, no, no, I couldn't, you know? So that's where it comes in that the wholesale needs to go back and negotiate with the seller and get their price down, maybe get their fee down as well and go from there. So these are three things that me as a cash buyer really like to see and pay attention to when analyzing a deal from a wholesaler as a cash buyer. I hope this helped out. Thank you for checking out the video and the channel. I'll see you on the next one.